So as a family, we thought that it was a good plan to make these murderers pay for their sins. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. In this episode, we start off with a short story about a girl that gets abused by her boyfriend, but he doesn't know her brother has close ties to the mob. Followed by a family tragedy, drunk soldiers attacking a family in their home with horrible consequences. But the family decides to take revenge so far, that it blushes the cheeks of all nuclear revenge stories. Lastly, a neighborhood creeper likes to rip off bikinis from underwater, but endures the claws of revenge. Be sure to invite the like button to a family dinner, but force it to pay for the ordered pizza. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. For a little bit of background. This is a story that has been confirmed as absolutely 100% true, and has always been shared in whispers whenever I was lucky enough to hear it. I live in a predominantly Mexican family and my dad's side is the Mexican side. This story begins in the 1950s Midwest in a larger city. My cousin Jorge was working for a decently classy restaurant that the mob used to visit frequently, due to its supposedly stellar food. Now this was back in the day when the mobs used to run the cities with their protections and whatnot, so seeing suited up Tonys in the street wasn't the most abnormal thing. Every time the mob came in to eat, Jorge had them at a table in no time. They were waited on hand and foot and nothing less. Jorge made sure they were fully supported throughout the meal and entertained with conversation. Now somewhere along those lines, the mobsters noticed how much Jorge was busting his balls and gave him a favor card with a number on it. They said if anything goes down and he needs help, he is to call the number on the card and tell them what's going on, and that the situation will get taken care of. Enter Arabella, Jorge's sister. Arabella had started dating a guy named Jack, and everything was lovey-dovey at first. Short time later, Jorge started noticing Arabella getting more and more distant emotionally and always coming with new bruises, marks and silly excuses for them. Jorge then starts questioning Arabella about what the situation is and eventually Arabella breaks down and reveals Jack is the one laying his hands on her so much. Jorge didn't like this. Jorge didn't like this at all. So when he was all right and riled up, all he had to make was one phone call. He told them everything he knew. All that's known about this story to me, is the aftermath concerning Jack. According to Jorge, Jack was picked up in a van somewhere off the street, beaten halfway to death, and then left on the side of a highway far away from town. I guess it's safe to say, don't abuse the sister of a guy who's trusted by the mob, to serve them stellar food. Me and my family have lived in this house for 17 years in a third world country that's known for being violent. Fortunately, it's been good to us since my mother is a figure of respect, we don't have any kind of enemies or nothing similar, we were just a middle class family, living it out. Before the tragedy, we were a small family of my stepdad, brother and sister, my mom, who was pregnant at the time, and I. This Saturday changed my life forever. As they were making the baby shower preps, dad saw some intruders going into the neighbor's house, to which he responded with a couple of gunshots to the ground, scaring the robbers out and making them run, and that was the end of that. However, this seems to have caught the attention of six young military soldiers that were passing by. They came over to verify all was okay, this was understandable as it was their job. However, it seems that the six soldiers were a bit hyped up, and they were obviously under the influence of alcohol. Which made the situation tense and disturbing. My mother was told to lay down facing down the floor, as they, for some reason, thought it was a good idea to make a pregnant woman lay flat on the stomach. When my mom declined and stated the obvious, she was told to stop with the BS. They also wanted my dad's gun, which was legally operable and he had the papers covering that it was legal. When they were told these facts, it seemed that these frickwits didn't like that and the situation got more tense. They proceeded to shoot my pregnant mom in front of my dad, making him furious as his pregnant wife, was on the floor bleeding out. To make it all short, a handgun was no match for six assault rifles, my dad, may you rest in peace, 
you were an amazing man, died in the confrontation. My brother tried to fight back as well, which resulted in him getting shot too, and I called the police for help. It was five minutes of hell, to wait for the shooting to stop, while my family just laid there. Neighbors were petrified, it seems that everything we had as a family, just went down the drain. In the recovery process, the baby, the one in my mother's belly, died for being born prematurely, and for the next five months, everything was just sad. At this point in the story, I was 12 years and all I could do about the situation was cry, my mom was in the hospital and my sister was too young to realize what happened. My big brother was out of the hospital first, fueled by his thirst of wanting to claim revenge on those who took our happiness away. My mom eventually recovered physically, but not mentally. So as a family, we decided that it was a good plan to make these murderers pay for their sins. So after coming back from the brink of death, my mom first destroyed the image of the military of the whole country. She shared her story with the news and reached national attention, stating that the military of this country kills their own people. The military got wind of this through the news, they wanted to stop her, which they couldn't, as they are so incompetent, that they offered her a public apology, which they retracted soon after. This was done by one of the sergeants from the base that covers the city we live in. They decided a more fitting compensation would be a supermarket coupon for $20. I'm serious, it was for some supermarket deal I still don't know or remember what thing it was for. Guess they didn't want to take responsibility for what they did. Mom was furious to know that this was the only thing they offered. Who could blame her, she had her life completely ruined. So, to make things equal, she sued the six military officers that took action that night, but to top it all, she wanted for the guys to be judged as citizens and not military. The trial started two months after the claim was made. These freaking guys. They actually admitted everything, about the alcohol, the shooting, everything, but the most amazing statement they made, was that it was all in self-defense. Needles to say, our attorney was just relieved to get his hands on an easy trial. The gaze my mom gave the military officers was so tense, that you could cut it down with a freaking butter knife. Jury found the guys guilty. They got 80 years of prison. We later heard that these guys were going to be sent down to a prison, in which my uncle was as well. He's not a good family member, but family nonetheless. Two weeks later, photos were sent to us. They showed the military officers, beaten senseless. Needless to say, uncle stated that these guys will be experiencing hell until he is out of there. So that is that. However, mom was not happy, she wanted more, she wanted to take the military out of the city, wipe them of the face of the earth. She started a petition, which was supported by the mayor, to take out the military base in the city and also for her to get paid for the damage she went through. After some legal mumbo jumbo, I was too young to understand, and three long months, there was no trace of the military, they needed to get out of the city ASAP. The media played a big role in this, as they put a lot of pressure on them, the criminals of the area made word go round that they would burn down the base if they didn't leave the city. The people of the military base were just begging my mom to stop it all, but my mom wasn't having it, she still wanted more. To put the last nail in the coffin, the president came down to check on the situation of the base. They had to report and be transparent about all base activities as they were obligated to do so. The president shut it all down, firing all dimwit leader personnel. Some of them were also charged as they had started illegal alliances with criminals. In the end, we still live in the same house that was attacked seven years ago. There's a special police now, they are military as well, however, they are far more strict in their conduct and they are nice to everyone. They don't look down at people. Mom was seen as the walking miracle, and now we are waiting to move out of this place and seek a future in another country. Hope this works for us. This is my grandma's story that she loves to tell at family gatherings and it's always a good laugh. This happened when she was a teenager, takes place in the 1970s. My grandma used to live in this neighborhood that had a community pool. Her and all the other kids in the neighborhood visited the pool on a daily basis during the summer. There was one boy, I'll call him Creeper, 
who was notorious for his swimming speed and removing girls' bikini tops. Basically, Creeper would sneak up on a girl underwater, untie the bikini top causing the girl to be exposed and swim away before anyone could really catch him, my grandma included. Of course the lifeguard on duty was notified and the lifeguard directly spoke to Creeper's parents multiple times, but they never did anything about his behavior and always brushed it off. I'm assuming the lifeguard couldn't stop Creeper from showing up to the pool, or something like that since it was a repeated offense. Since nothing was being done about Creeper, my grandma decided to take revenge into her own hands. My grandma's nails were and still are very strong and healthy. One night, she sat in her bedroom and carefully filed all of her nails to a sharp point. The next day, everyone was at the pool as usual. My grandma was in the water and strolling around. She purposely held her hands above the water so her nails remained hard, dry and sharp. And waited. Sure enough, Creeper saw a back turn to him and thought this was another perfect target for his exciting endeavors. He swam up to her underwater, unknowing that my grandmother was watching him from the corner of her eye. And when her bikini top fell down, she instantly lunged after Creeper while he was just about to swim away and raked all of her claws down his wet and soft back. Creeper screamed as blood began spreading in the water around him. He scrambled to the pool edge and was frantically trying to get out of the water and according to my grandma, she said it looked like he was attacked by a wild cat, to which my family jokingly says that he actually was. Everyone in the pool had to evacuate, for obvious reasons. Either later that day or the next day, Creeper's parents stormed to the pool and wail about pressing charges against my grandma. The lifeguard simply responded with a reminder about their son's behavior and warned that he would also go to the police to be a witness. My great-grandmother was also there and threatened with a lawsuit of sexual harassment against Creeper's parents. Needless to say, Creeper never returned to the pool after that. My grandma says she feels bad about probably permanently scarring Creeper, but that's about it. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation.